Hello, my name is Riley Skelton, and in today's review video, we are going to be discussing current issues in public relations. This theme falls under the knowledge, skills, and abilities of history of and current issues in public relations. History and current issues is worth 6% of the overall exam. As listed per the KSAs under the history and current issues section of the exam, it is important for students to understand the effect and impact of emerging technology on communications models. This idea will be woven through our learning targets with examples, as technology plays a major role in our era of public relations. Our first learning target will be to define our era of public relations. Next, we will discuss current trends in public relations, and then we will describe the issues public relations is facing as an industry. First, let's define our era of public relations. We're all familiar with trends. Now, I'm not talking about pop sockets, whipped coffee, or tie-dyed sweatshirts. We're going to stay focused on current trends in public relations. So, what exactly does a trend mean in terms of PR? Well, a trend is defined as a general direction in which something is developing or changing. The profession of public relations that we know today is not the same profession that existed in the 1920s. Public relations has grown and adapted to better serve a modern era. This practice will continue to develop and change year after year as new trends emerge. As stated by the Certificate and Principles of PR Study Guide, we are currently in the era defined as Digital Age and Globalism. This era began in 1986 and continues until present day. The trends of the Digital Age and Globalism era include constant technological connections, international relationships, and organizational transparency. Tools include the internet, social networks, and mobile technology. Now that we've determined that we're practicing public relations in the era of digital age and globalism, let's move on to our second learning target. It's time to take a look at three main trends we can expect to encounter. As per the exam's definition of our era, we will be taking a look into constant technological connections, international relationships, and organizational transparency. Within the first highlighted trend of constant technological connections, we are going to use the example of micro-influencers. According to cmswire.com, a micro-influencer is someone who focuses on a specific niche or area and are generally regarded as an industry expert or topic specialist. And according to entrepreneur.com, 2020 will be the year of micro-influencers. The rise of brand interest directed towards micro-influencers is a result of clients' desire for authenticity. Micro-influencers share connection, dialogue, and trust with a more intimate and attainable audience than macro-influencers. Public relations professionals have realized that an increased level of authenticity results in an increased level of consumer trust. Now, let's move on to our second trend of international public relations. GCPR.net defines practicing international public relations as developing an understanding of other countries and getting your messaging right in all markets. This trend provides perspective on how the world is and how that might be different from how you and your company perceive the world. If you are curious about the importance of international relationships, Nearly one-third of all the corporate profits in the United States are from international relationships. In fact, 70% 70, 70 of Coca-Cola's sales are from international revenue. Rodolf Ichvara, Global Creative Vice President of Coca-Cola, describes the Worldwide Corporation's One Brand campaign as designed to celebrate the notion that simple pleasures of drinking an ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any moment more special. The universal moments in storytelling depicted in the campaign were created to resonate with our consumers globally. The same images in television creative in Japan will also be seen in Italy and Mexico and around the world. While Coca-Cola chose to show the same images in multiple different countries, oftentimes PR professionals choose to alter their campaign messaging based on the country they are broadcasting to. GCPR.net says, every country has its own media landscape its own PR rules, and set of laws. Now let's cover our final trend, organizational transparency. Organizational transparency is a term that's been around for many years. The practice is defined as an organization being transparent to its clients and or society. 
In our current society, there is a greater emphasis placed on consumers to spend their dollar in the right place. Whether consumers feel passionate about sustainability, racial equality, or supporting small businesses, the bottom line is that consumers are going to support an organization that they trust. They will cease to support any organization that betrays their trust. A recent example that made headlines revolves around a clothing brand named Reformation. Reformation is known for being a popular, sustainable brand with a high price tag. In June of this year, Reformation came under fire for racial injustice. The brand made an Instagram post to their 1.6 million followers in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. After the post was made, allegations of past misconduct directed towards employees of color came to light. Past employees felt as though the company was not transparent as they had never supported their black employees before. They felt as though Reformation was making false claims of being an ally when in actuality they weren't. Reformation was withholding the truth and not being transparent. One employee said, Working for Reformation traumatized me. Being overlooked and undervalued as a woman of color who worked and managed their flagship store for three years was the hardest. I cried many times knowing the color of my skin would get me nowhere in this company. Despite the company's attempts to win back their audience by apologizing and pledging donations to Black Lives Matter and the NAACP, it appears as though the mistruth, this mistruth prevented the fashion brand from returning to their former status anytime soon. Many micro-influencers have stopped endorsing the brand altogether. The hashtag Boycott Reformation was trending online as there, and there has been a public outcry from consumers to remove the brand from large retailers such as Nordstrom. This shows the importance of organizational transparency from the beginning and what can happen when you lose consumer trust. Now let's move on to our third and final learning target. Describe current issues the public relations industry is facing. The three main issues we will be diving into are increasingly blurring the lines and creating confusion between PR and marketing, the expectation to quantify results from PR campaigns, and the attention gained by unethical and unprofessional practitioners who can tarnish the reputation of public relations. Let's begin by defining the difference between marketing and public relations. The profession of marketing is focused on selling the product, while PR professionals are focused on selling the company. To elaborate, marketing is strictly focused on the promotion of goods with the goal of earning revenue. PR is focused on the controlled and strategic sharing of public interest and news information with various stakeholders, building and maintaining a positive brand reputation and earning media exposure. A lot of the confusion between marketing and PR has to do with social media. This is because social media provides tools that belong to both PR and marketing professionals. A popular blog titled Media Bullseye writes, some of the main functions of social media such as advertising and promotional posts, belong to traditional marketing functions. PR pros, however, can use social media to share information and spread awareness about the company. Additionally, PR departments can respond to consumer comments, concerns, or questions to forge stronger relationships via communication. With this commentary, we understand that social media cannot be a skill set that is confined to one profession or the other, therefore causing the reoccurring issue of blurring lines between the two. Let's address our second issue of clients' expectations to quantify results. Clients often expect PR professionals to be able to quantify results in a way that's easy for them to understand, such as graphs, charts, or spreadsheets. While of course it is understandable that they want to see a representation of their results, oftentimes PR campaigns cannot be measured in such an analytical way. This causes an issue. To solve this issue, let's discuss some ways in which PR campaigns can be quantified. The first way is through press clippings. PR professionals can track and count the number of mentions they secured in key media outlets. We can also measure if these articles had a ripple effect that led to even more media coverage. Engagement on social media, such as likes, tags, comments, and reposts, is another way to measure results. The quality of press also matters. By conducting content analysis and asking questions such as, did the reporter mention the brand's key messaging? and was the company portrayed in a positive light, provides another great source of, me of measurement. The amount of website visitors and clicks is another great way to count consumer interaction. 
At the root of PR is research. By comparing survey results from the beginning of the campaign to survey results from the end of the campaign, you will be able to measure statistics such as, is brand awareness increasing? And did the consumer's viewpoint of the company change? Let's take a look at our final issue in PR, attention gained by unethical and unprofessional PR practitioners. Do you remember the popular nationwide PR campaign involving Activia Yogurt from 10 years ago? Perhaps celebrity spokesperson Jamie Lee Curtis will bring the popular advertisements to mind. Activia's overall branding and PR claimed that the yogurt contained probiotics. Therefore, consuming this Activia yogurt could help regulate your digestive system and you could avoid catching the cold or the flu. A separate television campaign ran that involved a little boy coming home from school with the color drained from his face. But he was revitalized once he consumed Dan Active, a sister product of Activia, and another yogurt that claimed to have probiotics. These items were sold at 30% premium over other brands because of these magical bacterial ingredients proven to strengthen immune system and regulate digestion. It was like a miracle yogurt, except it wasn't. In 2010, the Dalton company who owns Activia Yogurt and Dan Active agreed to settle federal trade char charges of deceptive advertising and allegedly exaggerated health benefits. A consumer told ABC News, I saw the ad on TV and I went to the market specifically to buy it, and there was absolutely no change whatsoever in my digestive system. As we discussed earlier, marketing deals with selling the product and PR deals with selling the company. There are aspects of this unethical campaign that involve unethical marketing practices as well as unethical PR practices. We're going to address the unethical use of public relations by comparing it to the, pub to the Public Relations Code of Ethics. The company did not adhere to the highest standards of accuracy and truth when communicating with the public as stated by the PRSA Code of Ethics in honesty. The company also did not demonstrate loyalty. The Dan & Company did not follow PRSA's guidelines to be faithful to those we represent while honoring their obligation to serve public interest. By hiring a public figure to be a spokesperson for their company, in this case it was actress Jamie Lee Curtis, they pulled her reputation to their scandal. They did not treat her or the public in a loyal or honest manner. Therefore, this is an example of a recent unethical PR scandal that has gone on to give PR a bad reputation. The goal of this video was to address the current issues in public relations. This involved defining our current era of public relations, discussing current trends in PR, and lastly, describing current issues in PR. We defined our current era of public relations to be the digital age and globalism, and discussed the importance of technology in PR. We discussed the current trends in PR as highlighted by the study guide. We discussed constant technological connections through the rise of micro-influencers, we address international relationships by looking at the Coca-Cola One Brand Worldwide Campaign. Then we took a look at the importance of organizational transparency by discussing the racial allegations against the clothing brand reformation. Lastly, we described issues in PR, beginning our discussion with blurring the lines between public relations and marketing and how social media is a tool that both professions rightfully use. The issue of analyzing PR results was solved by explaining various options such as social media, and surveys to quantify the results of PR campaigns. Finally, we use a 2010 example of Activia Yogurt and the Dan & Company to display unethical PR. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this review helpful. I wish you the best of luck on the exam.